Okay, hi, uh, this is Chris CPW again, and I am doing a second video on using IntelliJ IDEA with uh, Minecraft Forge modding. Uh, this one is probably going to be more useful to most people. This is uh, uh, going to be a significantly shorter video. Just going to go over setting up a uh, an MDK development environment in IntelliJ IDEA 2016.1. So here's the welcome to IntelliJ screen again and here I've got a clean new directory which completely empty uh, my new mod uh, which is simply the MDK extracted into an empty directory we're using 1770 1.9 because of course we are and what we're going to do now is we're going to point IntelliJ at that directory and tell it to import the build gradle file So here's the build gradle file for my new mod and we go OK and now we want to select the options we need to make sure we create directories for empty content routes automatically that matters make sure we have selected use default gradle wrapper and uh, otherwise everything looks fine idea based uh, project uh, format and uh, we should be good to go OK. So it's now going to pull in that Gradle project uh, again, same as for the Forge video before. It doesn't actually do much when it does that. It's simply passing out the uh, build Gradle, figuring out what might be in there. But uh, things are going to change a little bit when we uh, do this. So we uh, open up the Gradle. We can see our source sets here, which are fine. Now if we go down to our tasks, Forge Gradle here. We have set up the comp workspace, which is our deobfuscated Minecraft source. This is the one that a lot of people use. So we're going to create a my new mod uh, run task uh, for the setup the comp workspace uh, VM options. We're going to give it a bit more memory again. Uh, four gigabytes for me, but two gigabytes is recommended. Uh, single instance only. We don't want to be running this in parallel apply okay and we should now be ready to roll so now what we're going to do is we're just going to run this uh, task and this is going to do the uh, de uh, obfuscation and uh, setting up the decompiled workspace for forge uh, this will run quite quickly because i have previously decompiled this version uh, each time you decompile a version, it remembers the Forge Gradle stuff. So that took 15 seconds. That's great, isn't it? Okay, so what we want to do now is refresh this project. Okay. That'll uh, refresh what's in uh, the system. And next up, we want to do this. Gen IntelliJ runs. What this is going to do is it's going to generate the run profile for the, uh, for the IntelliJ. So if we just run this once, we only need to do this one time, and it's going to tell me that we uh, have to do a project reload. That's fine. Okay. And now, in a few seconds, when it's finished loading, we should see... Yes, here we are. So we've got Minecraft Client, Minecraft Server, and the Setup Decompo workspace. We just need to go into these configurations here. Open up the application. For the client, we just need to set the class path to be the main module apply that the client uh, the server the same thing main module apply that okay and we are now ready to roll so if we go to the minecraft client we can now have a look and run it And here we go. There's Minecraft again. And uh, if we go and look at the list of mods, we can see example mod is loaded there. <laughs> Credits to Fortune FML guys. Exorthery's example, dude. It's such a brilliant placeholder. Okay, great. So we now have a working 
Forge environment inside of IntelliJ 2016.1. So we're going to quit that. Now, one thing that a lot of people ask, uh, so I'm going to show you how to do this right now, is how do we do uh, hot reloading of classes inside of uh, IntelliJ? Because um, unlike in Eclipse, it's not all 100% automatic. But it's mostly there. It's pretty much perfect, but uh, you just need to know how to set it up. So let's go and make some code that we can actually hot reload. So here we go. Now then, let's do a root void on player tick. Uh, player tick event uh, tick. Okay, so we're going to do a quick log message. We want the board Apache logging and it's FML log. Okay, so we've got that bit. Now we need to make sure we register. So we go to the event bus. Event bus dot register. This. And of course we need to make sure this is a subscribe event. So there we go. <coughs> We are ready to roll. Uh, now, the important thing is, is that you need to be running with a debug mode. So we're going to run with debug turned on. So here's the debugger starting up. And there's the game. Okay, so we are loaded as we saw before. There's the mod. So let's go and make ourselves a new world. Creative flat. Silly name. Fish. Good. So now, as soon as we get into the world, we should see hello tick going on down there. See, lots and lots of hello ticks because it's ticking a lot. Now, let's go and change that message, shall we? From hello tick to flibble. Flibble tick. Okay, so now we're going to save this. Now, to make it hot reload, we need to rebuild the uh, module. So we can uh, make the module, make the project, or compile that class. Uh, probably just do make project. Control F9. Okay, and we can see down here, now first time you do this, you might get a little prompt saying, do you want to reload the, hot reload the class? But once you've accepted that prompt, and there's little ticks that say, don't prompt me again, uh, what you'll normally see is this, see, Minecraft client, one class reloaded down here. And now if we go back to our code here, and back to the game, we're now doing flibble ticks. And that is how you do hot reloading. And that is how you set up a development environment. Uh, other things you should do when you come in here, uh, setting up your first, uh, setting up your mod. Uh, things you should do is change your version number, change your group number, change your archive base name. Those are things that affect how your uh, how your mod will be named. The uh, other things we could change uh, the version of Forge we are using. Uh, currently, this is uh, 1.9, 12.16.0.17.70-1.9, because we are 1.9 of Minecraft, which is this bit here. This is the version of Forge, 12.16.0.17.70, and we are running on the 1.9 branch of Forge. So that's what that structure is. Uh, as new versions of Forge come out, you can re basically revise the Forge version and update your sources of course and it will automatically update you simply need to rerun your setup decomp workspace and everything should just work uh, you can change your MCP mappings currently this is the forge recommendation but there are newer ones I expect out there already 
uh, and there is a whole ton of other things you can do to customize your build environment. Uh, you can configure Gradle Wrapper to use distribution with sources. It will provide IDE with Gradle API DSL documentation. I This takes a long time and I don't see the utility in it myself, but there you go. I hide. And you are done. You'll probably want to delete this yourself and start doing your own code. But this is a good baseline. Thanks for listening.